It was awesome. We had the opportunity to go over and put the flags in it, uh, Woodlawn National Cemetery this week. And so many people showed up. It got taken care of in 40 minutes. Yeah. And then as Donnie, yeah, it was awesome. And as Donnie was uh, thanking everybody for coming, the, the people were gathered around there. They were from all over. We had guys from Verizon there. We had VFW. We had a lot of uh, veterans over there. We had little league teams over there. It was, it was really cool. But we, we had the opportunity to pray too. And we had the opportunity to speak a little Second Chronicles 714 um, to the people, amen. And talk to them, not just talk to, but pray for them a little bit about Jesus and, and getting back to the roots of our country, amen. And not letting all those that had fought battles that that gave their life for those battles um, for the beliefs for the the things they believed in about this country and everything good about our country comes from god does it not everything everything that's awesome about our country it comes from god and we had an opportunity to speak that into the people that day someone say amen it was awesome we're going to be going over on Tuesday, and we're going to be pulling out the flags and, and taking care of them until next year. If the Lord tarries, you never know how long the Lord is going to tarry. Someone say amen. You never know. You know what else today is? It's Pentecost Sunday. Hallelujah. It's Pentecost Sunday. It's, it's one of the greatest days in history, you know. Jesus set it up. He gave, he gave his life. He went to the cross, and he set Pentecost, Pentecost Sunday up. And that day changed everything that we know about Christianity and about following Jesus. Amen. A lot of people these days, we think that we need another outpouring of the Holy Ghost like they had on Pentecost Sunday, but that's not really what we need. That day was enough for all of eternity. God poured his spirit out on man for all of eternity. All we have to have is some people that want to follow after Jesus again. Amen. God poured his spirit out and it has not left this earth. We, we just need to follow after Jesus. Someone say amen. We need some followers of Jesus. It says in Acts 2.1, when the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all with one accord and in one place. And, and that's the powerful thing about that day. There was many people, they, they had this expectation of, of the Holy Spirit coming. They didn't really know what was going to happen, but they knew something awesome was going to happen because Jesus told them to go to that place and tarry until he came. And he came, he did not dissatisfy anybody. He came and poured his spirit out in that place because they were all hungry. They were all waiting waiting for Jesus. Say amen, somebody. Could you imagine if, if it was like the church of today, you know, if somebody said, well, I don't think I can get up and make it to the upper room today. I, I think I'm just going to stay home and rest for a while. Or the races are on TV today, so I'm just going to take it easy and sit in my easy chair. Or I'm, I'm pretty upset with, with Peter over there. He, he kind of said something I didn't like the other day, so, so I'm not going to go to the, to the upper room room today but they all tarried in that place amen they all waited and thank God they did amen because God poured his spirit out because there was some people willing to go to that upper room and wait in expectation wait for him to do something great and great he did amen and that's what God needs again. You see, the Spirit of God is, is all over, hovering all over this earth. And we just need to get together in one mind, in one accord, and wait for God to do something great in our lives. Our desire here at the Way Center is for Christ. The church that, that Christ established. Now, Nate told a joke this morning. You know there was a vehicle in the Bible he, that, uh, that, that the Bible talks about a car or an automobile in the Bible? It says they were all in one accord. Amen? They were all in one accord. But it wasn't a Honda Accord. They were all together in agreement. 
They, they were in agreement. They were, they were solid. They were standing strong. They were, they were a church that understood what the times were. They were a church that understood that when we stand here, when we wait, God will fulfill the promise that he said. Jesus will fulfill the promise. And, and he'll, he's, he's awesome to be able to do that in your life. If you, if you get together in one mind, in one accord with, with fellow believers, but especially having the mind of Christ, he will do something amazing in your life. Amen? Amen. I, I see us being a church of zeal. Anybody want a little zeal in your life? Hallelujah. You know, there was some zeal that happened at 9 a.m. on that day. 2000 and, and whatever, whatever years ago, there was some things that happened in that upper room that defined Christianity for 2000 years to us being here today. They were, they were fearless. And, they, and over the years, we've never forgotten, it says in Luke 24, 32, did not our hearts burn within us while he talked with us by the way and while he opened the scriptures to us? You see, we need to always remember what Christ has planned for us, amen? We always need to remember that day of Pentecost, that great day, the outpouring of his Holy Spirit. We always need to remember what his intentions are for our life. We we always, when we open up the word, we need to remember what it says about us in the word, amen? And it will give us some great zeal. It will make our hearts burn again. And that's what the church needs today. Our hearts need to burn. Oh, come on, somebody getting excited in this place. Our hearts need to burn for Jesus again, amen? We need to come into the house expecting when we feel down, when we feel disappointed. We need to make sure where God told us to be, that's where we can be found, amen? We're to be found in the house of God, our hearts burning for him, amen? The title of the message today is Don't Pull Up Short. Don't pull up short. You see, I still believe that it's going to happen in this place. I still have faith, and I believe. I'm still determined, amen, just like they were on that day. I'm still determined that God is going to do something amazing in each and every one of you. I'm still determined that he's going to do something great in this community. I'm still determined that he's going to use us together when we get in one mind and one accord. I'm still determined that we're going to see this great outpouring of the Spirit again. Amen? Usually leaders build to move people forward, right? Great, great leaders, they want to push people forward. They want to, they want to push people ahead. They want to get them to move ahead. Amen? But some of us need to go back. Some great leaders, maybe sometimes, need to take some people back. Amen. Back to where they left Jesus. And that's what I want to talk to you, some of you here today and some of you online today. I want to take you back to where you left Jesus. I want to grab some of you and I want some of you to grab some people and I want you to help me to carry them back to where we left Jesus. Someone say amen. America needs to go back. We need to get back to the roots that we were established for, the roots that those great men and women gave their lives for, believing, never believing that they would see the things that happen in our country happen today. It says in Joel 2.12, and I've preached this, I've preached this scripture a lot. It says, now therefore says the Lord, return to me with all your heart. You see, that means we got to go back somewhere. It means we've moved on with our lives and we forgot about Jesus, some of us. It means that we've moved on and we've only taken just a little bit of what Jesus has for us, just the things that we like, the parts that we've liked, and we've moved forward, but but we really got to get back if we want our country to be great again, if we want our families to be great again and healthy again, then we got to go back and we got to grab the rest of what we left behind there. It says, return to me with all your heart, with fasting and with weeping and with mourning. 
So rend your heart and not your garments. You see, Joel was talking to some people that he knew it was, cu- it was customary for people to, to rip their clothes when they were mourning. He knew that you could tear your clothes without tearing your heart. He knew you could rip your clothes without, without ripping your heart. He's saying, return to me fully with a repentant heart. Not just on the outside, not just what people can see. You see, that's what they used to do. They used to tear their clothes so people could see them in their repentance. But really, what he wanted, he didn't want to see the outside. He wanted to see your heart. He wanted the inside, and he wanted your whole heart. And he wanted it with fasting and weeping. And I don't know about you, but my wife and I, we've made up our minds in this place. We're willing to pay the cost, and we are. And some of you here, you're paying the cost too. We're we're going to finish this thing right. We're gonna finish what God has called us to do right. Someone say amen. We're determined, we're not going to settle. You see, the world wants you radical, and he wants you full of, they want you full of opinions. Am I not right? The world wants you to decide about everything, wants you to form an opinion about anything. They want you radical about a lot of things. They want you radical about about what they believe, about pushing their agenda, but they don't want you radical for Jesus. The world can't stand to have you radical for Jesus. The world wants you to conform, but not conforming to Jesus. It wants you to compromise. And if you must be a Christian, then Satan wants you to be a borderline Christian. A borderline Christian. It talks about a story in Mark 5 when Jesus went to the land of the Gadarenes. You see, he just had, he just had some miracles happening on the other side of the, the, the lake, the river, and then he, he decided to go visit the Gadarenes. And the Gadarenes was on the east side of the Jordan River. The Gadarenes were the descendants of Gad. Gad was one of the 12 nations of Israel. And when Joshua led the children of Israel across and into the promised land, the tribe of Gad decided to stay on the other side of the river. They pulled up short of their inheritance. You see, they they thought the land there was good enough. They saw that the land was a little bit further fertile, and they decided it was a good place to have livestock, livestock. And they were afraid of the Canaanites that were on the other side of the river, the report about the people that were on the other side of the river. So they compromised their beliefs. They stayed on this side of the river. They they decided to trust only what they could see rather than trust God to take them into an unknown territory. You see, they're the borderline Christians. They're the ones that decided not to cross over. They say, I think I'm good. We've come this far for the Lord, and this is about as far as I'm going. I'm going to stay right here. I gave my heart to Jesus. I've done a couple things that I know he's pleased with, but I don't really like it over there. I don't know what's on that other side, so so this is as far as I come. I'm staying right here. They weren't interested in going all the way. They were satisfied where they thought they felt safe. You see, they settled for the border. While the the rest of Israel, they followed God into the promised land. They got everything that they'd been praying for and and working towards for the last 40 years. They They followed him right into their destiny. And this put Gad, the farthest tribe, from the presence of God on the other side of the river. And many, t- many of you today, many people today, let me take that back. I don't want to point at you today. <laughs> All right, I'm going to give you a break. Okay? Many people today are in that same spot now. Maybe you've settled. 
Maybe you've stayed back at different, a distance. Maybe you've decided it's better to trust in your own plans. Maybe, maybe you've decided that it's better for me to follow after what society's plan is for me. You see, society has a plan for each and every one of us. It's to conform. It's, it's to follow their plan. Amen. The news is pushing it. Media is pushing it. Big money's pushing it. Big boxes, big industry, big, 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 big uh, companies are pushing society's plan on us all today. We've seen this in the news a lot the last week or two. Too many Christians are worshiping God from a distance. Uh, from the other side of the river, back at the border. They go to church on Sunday morning and they barely feel his presence. And when it's all over, they wave goodbye to Jesus, they close the door and they go do whatever they want for the rest of the week. Who are you in your homes? When you go home after you leave church, who are you? Who are you? We were talking today downstairs in, in the rooted class. We were talking about what, what has God really done inside of us? What's the fruit that comes out from the inside of us? Amen. What have we given up of this world? What have we given up that the enemy wants to carry it around? What have we given up and, and what have we replaced it with? Who are you inside your homes? I'm asking you online, who are you when you go home? Who are you at the dinner table with your children sitting at the table? Who are you at work when you're, when you're with all your coworkers? Who do they see you to be? Who are you when you're at the restaurant, when you're at the company picnic, when you're, when you're out with friends? Who really truly are you? What do people see in your life? You see, many people hang out on the edges. They know if they get close to God's presence, they can't live like they want to live. And the world wants you to live however you want to live. They don't want you to live a surrendered life. And many people are there. They don't want to live a surrendered life. And they know if they go to the other side that they'll have to surrender some things and they just don't want to give them up. They know the closer we get to God, the more we take on his nature. They know the more that we'll take on his character. Amen. Now that's a good thing. That's something to smile about. The closer you get to, to Jesus, the, the closer you get to him in worship, the more you fellowship with him, the more you fellowship with people that are like-minded, the more that you get into one accord, the more you take on his character, the more you take on the mind of Christ. Amen. The more your appetite increases for the things of God. But the trouble is that's not attractive to the world. Oh, I know I'm preaching to some of you. Some of you look pretty bored here. But the truth is, the world will never, never lift you up when you're serving God. Okay? You have to stand apart from the world when you're, when you're serving God. You, you have to make a decision. I'm getting across the board, border. I'm not going to pull up short. And I don't care what the world says. It doesn't matter what they think of me because I know Jesus Christ and I'm making a plan. I want everything that he has for me. I don't want just a little bit, okay? I'm not gonna come part way and not go all the way. Come on, when we were kids, man, we went for it. When we were playing sports, when we were playing kick the can, we did what we could. When we, everything we could. When we were playing baseball, man, I used to go in head first, sliding into second base. I didn't care if I got a cleat in my head. I don't care if I got dust in my mouth. I made a decision. I'm going in. I'm going all the way. Why would it change when we become adults and we get this pressure from the world? Why would we make a decision to stay back from God because the world says that we can't go closer to him? Why would we do that? We need to, we need to decide that we're not going to stay back at the border. Amen? So many avoid intimacy with God. They have a form of godliness but deny its power. They render their clothes but not their hearts. Amen? They give God their clothes. They rip their clothes, but they don't let God move in, in their hearts. They don't rip their hearts. They don't mourn and they don't weep 
over their relationship with Jesus. They don't weep because they're standing back on the, on the sidelines watching. They don't mourn because, because the presence of God is so far away. They don't give themselves to, Lord, to the Lord that way. Here's the truth today. You can't keep doing what you want and get close to God at the same time. You see, that's what we all want. We want to get close to God. We all showed up here today because we want to get close to God. We want to feel his presence. But folks, we have to give up the things that we want to do. We, we have to let him take some of the things away that the world wants to deposit in us. We can't live in the world and be close to the presence of God and be getting closer to him each and every day. Many try, but they, they remain stuck in the, in the same strongholds. And that's where Christians get frustrated. They have the same strongholds. They're living in the same th- sins that they, that they came to Jesus with instead of allowing Jesus to remove those things. They, they continue to live in them. They have the same fears. They have the same disappointments. And nothing ever changes. And it's because they've decided to live on the edges and stay back away from from the presence of God and stay on the border where the world is and where the, where the kingdom of God meets. They live their life with the same offenses that they came to Jesus with, the same ungodly speech, the same internal strife that has been living in them for years and years, the unforgiveness. They never drop it off for Jesus. It's cool to the world. Bad is good and good is bad. It's cool to the world. Everybody carries an offense these days. It's cool to the world. It's it's okay for the world, but it's not okay for the child of God. Someone say amen. amen. There comes a point when you have to cross over the border. You have to You have to begin to live righteously, and it's not hard when you get closer to the presence of God, amen? If you don't do that, you're going to fall out of relationship with him. You'll go backwards and backwards and backwards, just like the Gadarenes did. You see, the Gadarenes had gotten far from his presence. They were raising pigs. Jews weren't supposed to raise pigs. Jews weren't supposed to eat pigs. Jews weren't supposed to touch pigs. You see, the pigs were considered filthy and unclean. And isn't it amazing what you're willing to get involved with when you'll stay back from God's presence? When you you compromise, when, when you settle for things. You see, I believe that that day, Jesus was headed to Gad He was there to clean them up. He was there to help them. He went there to encourage them. I believe he went there to teach them and to heal them. I I believe he probably went there to spend some time over with the people from the gatherings. And when he stepped off the boat, a man was waiting there to greet him. Some of you know the story. The Bible says the man was possessed with many demon spirits. He was a reflection of what God's people had become by staying back on the edges. They were lost and empty of God. Over a time, they became lost and empty. And when, when you as an individual or, or us as a country, when we pull away from the presence of God, demons will always be attracted. This is what's happened in our country, folks. Demonic activity will enter into our lives, our nation, and even into our churches. And and it's time for us to open our eyes and see that this has happened. This demonic activity has corrupted the minds of Christians, corrupted churches, it's corrupted government, it's corrupted everything and everywhere, not just in the United States, but all over this world. The minds of people, it's corrupted. We have have a job to protect our minds. We We have a job to protect the Holy Ghost that lives inside of us. We have decisions to make, but we have to draw closer to the presence of God. Otherwise, we continue to fall back and we become corrupted just like everybody else. Just as the people of Gad let the pigs into their nation, we've allowed them into ours too. 
Now you're all going to go and call me a bigot because I said I love pigs into our nation. I'm talking about sin. I'm talking about the sin that we've allowed. I'm talking about the sin that we've compromised. I, I'm talking about the things that we've been conditioned with and we've just went, a, we've went along with it. Look at, look at what Anheuser-Busch, they're, they're paying a price now. Target is paying a price. Some other companies are paying a price. You know what? They should pay with their company for trying to pull the wool over our eyes. Amen? But the thing is, they're rich companies. They're smart people. They know we'll probably get away with this. It won't be long. They'll forget about all of this and we'll start selling our Bud Light with whatever we want on. We'll, we'll be able to sell whatever we want in our store. Pretty soon these people, they don't stand strong. They don't, they don't get close to the presence of God. They don't become, they get mad for a little bit and then they compromise. That's what's happened. They played a large bet. Disney World, they bet the same way. Lots of companies, every, every large company out there, they've bet on Christians. They bet that we'll give up on our faith. They bet that we'll compromise. And they bet that we'll allow that sin to come right into more and more and flood into our country. It's, it's time for us to not stay back at the border. It's time for us not to be satisfied at the border. Now, I know I'm preaching the truth. If Jesus was here, he'd say, follow me across the river. That's where the promised land is, amen? But light saying, follow me back here. Half of the country's going to follow him back there. Christians got to stand strong. We got to get right, folks. We got to get close to the presence of God. We've given the enemy access to our schools, to our children, to our homes. I don't know if I hear what Target's doing, but if I'm hearing it right and, and they want to give, give other people the rights to go to your children and start to transform their gender, and we're going to go ahead and throw a little bit of a fuss about it for a couple weeks, and then we're going to go ahead and let their stock price go back up and go buy their stuff, they're betting. They believe it. They've done the research. They know who will stand strong and who won't. They spend a lot of money. These stores don't come into places before they do a big study. They know what they can sell, what they can get away with. They know this community. They know that community. They know the hearts. They know that people are going to rip their clothes, but they're not going to rip their hearts. They're betting on it. They're betting on it. That ought to say something right there. It's time not to stand on the borders. It's time to do a little something. It's time to go ahead and expect a move of the Holy Ghost. It, it's, it's not time to wait for five minutes and quit. It's not time to give up on what we believe. It's, it's, it's not time to go ahead and let the schools do exactly what they want. Go to a PTA meeting, or maybe not. Somebody else will take care of it. It's, it's time for the church to, to really get it together and say, you know what? For the sake of God, for the sake of my family, for the sake of this community. Oh, pastor, it's such, it's so... It is hard, but we can't be border people. We can't. We can't be borderline Christians. You see, that's what they're betting on, folks. They're betting on you being a borderline Christian. They're betting on you sitting in your home maybe and saying, you know what, I believe the word, it's true. And then walking out and drinking the same water, going to Target and buying whatever it is now, this isn't a sermon about boycotting those, those companies, but boy, I think we should. Amen. I think we should. Amen. They want to destroy your children. They want to take those babies. Destroy them. They want you to compromise. 
give up what you believe, make you empty, make you the Gadarenes, make you start raising pigs, start eating it too. It's time for us to stop letting that sin into our houses. It's time for us to stop letting that sin into our schools or, 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 to, or to let people know that, you know what, these are our children. But we can't, yeah, we can. We can. Just think, if, if you had a community that was sold out for Jesus, deciding they're not going to stay back on the borders, just, just think what could happen. But we have small minds sometimes. That's why they call us border people here. That's why the Gad started raising pigs. They forgot what God called them to do. They, they forgot what the kingdom of God was about. It's time, folks. We really have to get it together. We, we can't be a people of God that don't want to be in the presence of God, that are afraid of what the community thinks about us. Who are you in your home? Change it. Who are you on the streets? Change it. Who are you at work? Change it. Change it. Make sure people know who you believe. Make sure, make sure you're in the presence of God. One of the things they do is look what they've already allowed. They'll allow more. Look what they've already allowed. They might, they might whine and complain a little bit about it, but they're just whiners and complainers. I know I'm preaching. They're just whiners and complainers. That's what they think of Christians sometimes. Oh, God help me. I, 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 I'm, not, I'm not talking about the kingdom of God, man. I, I'm talking, you know, the kingdom of God is supposed to be full of power and strength, glory. I'm talking about what, what the world thinks of Christians. We're not a threat to this world. Look at what they've allowed. They'll allow more. They'll get over it. What sins have you allowed? What sins have you allowed in your homes? What sins have you allowed in your TVs? What, what sins have you allowed into your minds? Scripture says the wages of sin is death. The wages of sin is death. And sometimes death comes before we're able to make the change or before we're able to give our life to Christ. The devil's on his last tantrum, folks. I'm telling you, it's, sometimes it's no fun preaching like this. But the devil's on his last tantrum, and we need to wake up. We need to get off the border, off of our inflatables, and get across the river. When Jesus stepped off that boat, the Bible says the demons recognized him. They were afraid, amen? You see, most of the demons, all the demons got thrown out of heaven with Satan, amen? Jesus was in heaven. Jesus told them, get out and threw, cast them down to the earth. They recognized Jesus, amen? And they recognized the Holy Spirit that's in you too. You see, the demons got stirred up in the presence of the Holy Spirit. They always get stirred up when the Holy Spirit's around. Demons get anxiety, amen? Some of you walk in the Holy Spirit and you can recognize that. You see all this stuff that's going on around you. It's because you stir up all the demons that are around you. They're everywhere. We are in a spiritual battle. The battle is strong and it's everywhere, folks. When we walk outside, the battle is there. The battle is in the church. The battle is everywhere. And if you're full of the Holy Spirit, those demons, they recognize you it's time to upset some demons are they afraid of you it's time to upset them amen it's time to take authority of the ground that you walk on amen the fruit of the spirit should be should be coming out of you there should be fruit evidence of who you are amen I'm preaching to everybody here, just so you know. I'm not singling anybody out. 
so you don't have to get offended. The next thing those demons say is, we know you're here to throw us out. Man, I wish they'd just say that to us. You know what? We know you're here to throw us out of the southern tier. So how about you just throw us in a herd of pigs? I'd be happy to oblige. Anybody else want to help with that? I'll tell you what, we don't have enough pig farms around this area to cast all those demons in, but God will give us something. We can cast them into, into anything. And, and, and it says that the, 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 the demons were cast out and into the herd of the pigs. 2,000 pigs, that's a lot of demons, man. Maybe five or six demons in each pig, too. They went crazy. They jumped off the edge of the cliff, just like some Christians do. They get crazy, jump off the edge. Instead of rushing in to the presence of God, they'll rush away. But anyways, what happened next was this guy, he's totally free. He's, he'd been locked up, he'd been chained up, he was totally free. And when the keep people came, they found this man sitting at the feet of Jesus. He was totally changed. Before this, he was uncontrollable. They tried to chain him up. He broke the chains. He was a big dude, but he was full of demons, and he was crazy. And, and he just had so much strength. They couldn't tie him down. But now that he's encountered Jesus, he's, he's sitting there. He's quiet. He's, he's listening to Jesus. He's in control. And what a miracle that these people were seeing. This guy had been terrorizing them for years and years and years. And, and they knew who he was. He lived in the cemetery, in the graveyard. And they knew and they were afraid of him. But here he was at the feet of Jesus. This huge miracle happened. But they missed it. The people missed it. They became upset. They were, they were upset at Jesus because they lost their pigs. So they asked Jesus to leave. They asked Jesus to leave because they lost their pigs, the very things that they knew they weren't supposed to have, that they knew they weren't supposed to be doing, raising the pigs, and they were upset because they lost them. So here they are, far from the presence of God, the farthest, the farthest people from the presence of God. They couldn't get to Jesus. And Jesus came to them. Imagine that. Jesus went to them, and they didn't even recognize him when they came. They missed their visitation from Jesus. They missed the opportunity that they would have had. They could have been healed. Their society could have been changed. Their community, could, everything that we've desired here in this place, they could have had, but they missed their visitation. And some of you, some of you online, some of you in this place, you're holding on to some of those things in your life, amen? You don't want to give them up. The world says that these things are fine, but God's not. God's not fine with some of these things that you're holding on to, and they've kept you back at the border. They've kept you living on the edges. And you, you want God to leave those things in your life alone. So you're afraid to get into the presence of God. You're afraid to cross over the river. You're afraid to even get your toes wet in the river. So you stay back on the dry land where it's safe. And you hold on to these things that you have in your life. But you can't be in his presence and keep all of your things. Someone say Amen. Amen. Am I lying to you all this morning? You can't be alive in Christ if you're holding on to things that bring death. The wages of sin is death. You're not crossing over. You're staying on the border because you like some of the things the world has to offer. The world wants to bring death into your life. And this is what the Lord is saying to you this morning. Pull up your stakes. Pull up your tent stakes. 
Enlarge the place of your tent. Get in the river, okay? Put, put those things on that are good that God has for you. Pack up your tent, put it on your back, and, and carry it across that river, amen? Set your tent stakes down on the promised land and not back on the edges. Get into his presence fully. That's what he wants. He's saying, get into my presence. Don't compromise and hang out on the edge. Our nation is a reflection of our compromised lifestyle. Far from the presence of God. There's nobody here that can deny that. If you deny that, you've been deceived. There's nobody here that can deny the compromise that we've made. Amen? Amen. We've allowed intense demonic activity. Some people don't understand the, the battle that really wages. Some people don't really believe that there's this spiritual battle going on. Well, we we're talking downstairs again today. Today's the day of Pentecost. This is the day that God poured out his spirit big time on man. Showed man exactly what can happen with the power of the Holy Ghost in your life. Many people don't believe it today. They don't believe that that's for today. But a couple years ago, they packed out the arena for a psychic. They believe the enemy can move with his spirit. They believe what the enemy might say to them, to their spirit, but they won't believe what God has to say to their spirit. They'll go in and listen to what the enemy has to say for their lives. They'll even buy into it. But when God says something, they just leave it alone. It's too spooky. It's too weird. And besides that, God, I got to give up too much if I believe what you say for my life. If I believe the plans that you have for me, it means I have to sacrifice. It means I have to be obedient. It means I have to give up those pigs that are in my life. And I just can't do it. So let me go over here and listen to what the world has for my life. I didn't plan on getting this intense today either. It just happens. Folks, it just happens. We're, we're in a battle. It's the battle royale. I don't even know what that means. It's the battle of all battles. It's a serious thing here. Okay? We have to be in it to win it. We can't referee it. We can't root for the good guys. We can't root for the Christians. We got to be in it to win it. It's that simple. We have to be in one mind, one accord, all fighting together, standing, praying together. There's power in your prayers. There's power in what comes out of your mouth. We can't be accepting. But if our nation would come in to the presence of God again, if we would let him work in each and every one of us again, if we give up those idols that we put before him again, if we give up our rebellion to the word, if we rebel against the world a little bit, if we, if we put the right attention where it's supposed to go, if we return to him with our hearts and not just our clothes, he will restore us. He'll restore our country. He'll refresh you. He'll refresh you, amen. Get in the river of God. He's refreshing in the river of God, amen. Get in the current of God. Get into the flow of God, amen. He'll rejuvenate your life. He'll pick it up and change it. He'll revive you. God is saying, you may have been struggling. You may have been far from me. But today, I came to you. And I'll do the same thing for you that I did for that man in the Gadarenes. 
I won't leave you alone to fight the battle. Just come rushing to me like that man did. Amen? Something in that man knew. I know those demons knew who Jesus was, but something in that man knew. If I could get close to Jesus, I'd be able to sit at his feet. I, I, I'll be able to, to have a peace of mind. I, I'll be able to walk through whatever it is that I, that I gotta walk through. And some of us, we look at this world and we, we shake our heads, we get anxiety, we get disappointed, and we allow it to continue us, to keep us back from crossing over. That's part of the enemy's plan too. He wants to frustrate you. Even, even with your beliefs, even with you, your knowledge of the word, he wants to frustrate you so you do nothing. You just get angry. We have to get in the river of God and cross over. I'm almost done. This is a good message for Memorial Day weekend. It is a good message. Those, those people over there, some of them knew Jesus, some of them didn't, but they fought for, for what God did in this country. And now we need to fight an unseen enemy. They could see their enemy and they fought to the death. We, we need to get in this fight even with an enemy that we can't see. But you know what? We can't lose. We got the power of the Holy Ghost living inside of us. But the thing is, you can have all the power in the world, but if you don't use it, you lose it. You lose it. I used to have a muscle car, 775 horse, probably dust just about any car in this area, but I was too afraid to step on the pedal, so I sold it. I got smart, <laughs> okay? I didn't need another ticket going 110 in a 40 mile zone, but it was an accident. <laughs> It was an accident. But we have to use the power. We have to recognize what's inside of us. We have to use our mouths. We have to use our minds, our strength. Your destiny isn't attached to this world. God's saying it's attached to me. It's not attached in this world. They don't define who you are. They don't define your success. They don't define where you go that's good that I have. But I have a plan for you. Your destiny is attached to me. I created you. This world didn't create you. You're mine. You don't belong to this world. Start acting like it. Attach yourself to my word. Act according to my word. When you mess up, repent. Return. I told you we have to take some people backwards. We have to go pick up Jesus again. We left them, we left them at the store or wherever. We left them there and we forgot all of them. Now we got to go grab them. Just a figure of speech. Don't get mad at me. We gotta go back and get Jesus, return to him. First John 5, 4 says, this is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith. Every God-led person conquers the world with their faith, amen? The conquering power is our faith. Someone say amen. We can do what we want with our faith when we have faith in God. So don't seek after the world's opinion anymore, okay? The world's opinion means nothing. We have to seek after God's thoughts. Don't consult the world. Consult this word. Amen? 
And remember this, we're gonna pray before we cut loose. But remember this, the enemy is okay with you hearing the word. He is, he's okay with you going to church. Remember, he wants you to be borderline. He wants you to be who this, who this world bet you to be. I tell you what, when, when I know the world's betting against me, I get more fired up, and you should too. The world's betting against us. The enemy's okay with you hearing the word, but you crush him when you apply the word. Amen? Amen. Stand up on strong legs. Stand up on strong legs. Come on now. <laughs> no fear here. No fear here. I have the Holy Ghost. I have the Holy Ghost. I was created for this time. I know exactly what to do. I know how to do it. I'm not afraid. I'm not lost. I'm not confused. I'm God led. I'm God driven. Now let's pray. And I want everybody to pray, man. I want you to raise your voices to Jesus so, so he hears you. I know he knows your thoughts. I know he knows. But I want the enemy to hear what we have to say. As I pray, just go ahead and pray with me. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for Jesus. We thank you, Lord, that we have victory, that victory is found in him. Victory is found in you, Lord. I pray, God, that you'll give us the strength, Lord, to stand. I pray in this place that that we'll, we'll just be, we'll be people that seek after you, never turning back. We will not live on the borders. Lord, we'll cross over to what it is that you have for us. We'll cross over to the plan that you have for us, God. We will not shrink back from this world. We will not conform to this world. We will not settle for the things of this world, Lord, but we're gonna point to you every bit of our beings. We're gonna point to you, Lord. Lord, we know that the world's betting on us, but Lord, we have the victory with our faith and we're declaring it here together right now. We declare this over our children. Lord, touch them. We declare it over our churches. Lord, touch those churches. Lord, we declare it over our community. Lord, we have to be a people that's ready to just seek after you. All of these things will be added unto us when we seek after you, Lord. So we place ourselves in your hands, Lord. We trust you, and we're going to get in the river of God. Someone say amen. Say, I'm going to get in the river of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you need prayer, if you need prayer, the altar will be open. There'll be some people willing to pray for you. If you need to know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, um, that would be awesome too. I'd love to pray with you if you'd like to have, start a relationship with Jesus today. If you don't know him, I'd love to pray for you here at the altar. If that's you, I just want you to come on down here. If not, go have a blessed weekend, Memorial Day weekend. Enjoy the great weather and know that we love you, we care for you, and we're praying for you throughout the week. Amen? Amen.